Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to talk about the C Sharp 12 feature or a use case of a C Sharp 12 feature that you shouldn't be using. And what is baffling to me is that both my ID, JetBrains Rider and also Microsoft recommend that you use it for that specific use case, but in the process you fundamentally change how your code works and you potentially introduce risk in your code. So in this video I'm going to explain what that feature is, why it is problematic and what we can potentially expect by C Sharp 13 or 14 when that eventually comes. If you like that of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training, check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple API, weather API, and it uses minimal APIs to grab the weather from a real API. I'm actually using the open weather map API service behind the scenes to fire a request and get the weather. So if I go ahead and I run this API, I can go in Insomnia and I can fire a request to get the weather for London. In fact, if I make this a bit bigger, you should be able to see that if I send that request for London, I'm going to get the weather back. It feels like 10 degrees. It is around 11.7 and I can get any weather for any city. I can say, for example, Paris over here, and that is getting the actual current weather now. Now, the weather retrieval process itself isn't really important. What's important is in the code. And let's go ahead and show you what I have in this open weather map service. So what I have is an API key here because that is needed to call that open weather map API, but it is free. You can just generate your own and try it out if you want to. And then I'm injecting a couple of things here. I'm injecting the IHTP client factory to generate an HTTP client. And then I'm injecting the iLogger because when there is no weather found for a given city, then I want to log that information. And that is basically it. Now, what's the feature I'm talking about? Well, it's a feature I've actually talked about a lot in this channel, and it is the primary constructors feature. Now, what is the use case I'm referring to when I'm talking about the thing that you shouldn't be using it for? Well, it's actually this thing over here. So as you can see here, Rider, my ID has a green squiggly line underneath the constructor saying that this can actually be moved into a primary constructor. So instead of having it here, I can use the built-in refactoring and say, oh, just inject it from here. And I don't know if you noticed this, but we now have these two parameters moved over here and we no longer have the private read-only Fields. This is something that also Microsoft sort of recommends in the documentation. In fact, if you go at any updated documentation, for example, the .NET Aspire one, you will see that when they have this weather API client to get the weather, they inject the HTTP client through the primary constructor. Now, I have a massive problem with this because this is not the same thing. Having a constructor like this, this primary constructor injecting these two fields and having the read-only fields that are mapped through a constructor over here are not the same. Not only do they change the behavior fundamentally, but they also limit what you can do in that constructor. Let's take a look individually at all the problems that can happen by you doing this, both following what Microsoft says or what Ryder says. Now, before that, real quick, I'd like to let you know that our Black Friday discount on DomeTrain.com is now live. You have until the 27th of November to use discount code BLACKFRIDAY23 to get 40% off any of the courses and 20% off any of the already discounted bundles. So this is your once a year opportunity to invest in your learning and learn anything you need to thrive as a .NET developer from unit testing, integration testing. We have clean architecture, DDD. Check out our courses, link down below, use code BLACKFRIDAY2023. And two things, our EF core is not included because it just launched, so that just gets 20%. And the code will only last for 500 purchases per course, so you might want to hurry. This discount has actually been in early access for some days now to my Patreons and our mail list, so make sure you subscribe to our mail list as well if you're going to get these early accesses to discount codes. Now back to the video. Well, the first problem is the obvious one. If I go ahead and I say, yeah, move this to a primary constructor, I'm losing the private read only field because there is no logic for these parameters over here to be read only. Now that I'm injecting them through the primary constructor, what's happening here is I can technically go here and assign this to whatever I want and nothing will stop me. Sure, I'm going to get a warning because this is a nullable, but if it was, there would be no warning. And I can go ahead and mutate the parameter that is being injected. This is very problematic because you're suggesting a refactoring that isn't the same as what it was. If this still was a private read-only field that is mapped 
through the injection, I wouldn't be able to go here and say HTTP client factory and say to do something. I'm getting a compilation error. You just can't do this. So why is this recommended? I do not understand it. And obviously I'm going to state the kind of obvious. You cannot have a read only modifier here. This isn't supported yet. And we don't know if it is going to be supported. Another thing that is problematic with this approach is that you can no longer assert on different conditions. For example, if I revert everything back to the constructor, you can no longer say something like this. You can't say that if this is null, then throw new argument null exception and so on. If I do this for both, and by the way, I'm omitting the name of parameter just for brevity, uh, if I do this and say, okay, move this to a primary constructor, what's happening is now we're keeping the private read-only fields over here, which is nice. I appreciate that. But then we are setting it to the injected field and we're using it here. And then we also have the throw. Like, how is this better than what we had before? It is more horizontal than vertical, sure. But is this necessarily better? And by the way, if you think this is better, please leave a comment down below and do let me know. And this is only allowed without any warnings from Rider, by the way, because I have this I throw a new null argument exception. If I remove this, then the recommendation is just replace with primary constructor parameters, and that is it. So you have this mesh of ideas, but no way to really glue them together properly. The other very obvious thing is that now we have inconsistency in naming because the typical approach with private read-only fields or private fields in general is to have the underscore in the name. So you would have something like this for these fields, indicating that those are top level fields in the class level that can be used in different methods. Yes, you can say that, well, I don't like having this underscore because I'm using this dot, but with this approach, you can't use this dot because this isn't really referring to a field anymore. It is referring to a constructor parameter, a primary constructor parameter that is converted behind the scenes to a field when captured into a method. So you have tons of things going on behind the scenes and there is no one consistent way that will make sense if you have multiple requirements for every single use case. So we go from the consistent approach that has a predictable result in how we write code to this thing that could basically mean anything. So what is my recommendation on this? Well, in my opinion, if you want to use this to inject services, don't. Just do it as you used to. Ignore the refactoring, ignore what Microsoft is saying. The feature is not really fully baked properly to support this use case. Yes, you're going to have a few more lines of code than if I just remove these. It's not that bad anyway, but just moving it into the constructor without a clear path of how to keep these as read-only parameters is something that you should not do in my opinion. On surface level, it might look better, but with a few more parameters, you're going to have this very convoluted primary constructor and mutability on parameters that should be immutable. I really hope that Microsoft eventually comes up with a solution to have this be read-only. And I don't want to leave you just like this. What I want to do is I want to show you another language that has primary constructors and see how they deal with this very issue. And that is Kotlin. Now, Kotlin over here has a very similar approach where you can go ahead and say that, hey, I have the HTTP client factory and I'm injecting it from the primary constructor. And then I can go ahead and I can have my method and I can use it in my method if I turn it into a property because Kotlin doesn't really have fields. So you would turn this into a mutable property by saying var HTTP client factory or an immutable property if you say val HTTP client factory. And then you're gonna go ahead here and you can just access it, no questions asked. Same thing if it was var. And the great thing about Kotlin is you can actually have access modifiers on the primary constructor. So I can say that this is public, which is the default by the way, I can say that this is private, so it is not leaked. I can say that this is internal and so on and so forth. This is a way more baked feature. And I think the only problem that Microsoft has with this approach being implemented in C Sharp is that, can you imagine what's going to happen if someone says that this is a public read only parameter over here? Like, why is this not a private setter property? Why is this just a read only very long name in the constructor? So I think they're holding back because they are now on this slippery slope that they can keep adding features to this and your constructor will get massive for no particular reason, just to say that we added a feature that maybe we didn't really need that much. This wasn't really a problem with records because records work differently, but allowing this to be done now in traditional types 
makes it a bit confusing. But I really, really, really want to know your thoughts on this issue and what you're going to do moving forward. So please leave a comment down below. Let me know what's your approach and what do you think about all this? As always, I want these videos to be a reason to have a health discussion on the language and .NET because Microsoft does read these comments in these videos. So please be respectful to each other and please let me know what you think. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.